What's up YouTube, Wave618 here, it's the 3rd of September. Today's video is essentially gonna be looking at Bitcoin. Uh, we're gonna be anticipating the long-term price action in Bitcoin, mainly going off this consolidation here, which if you've been watching my previous videos, you know that I'm anticipating a move upwards from here. I explained how this appeared to be forming a basing out pattern. And I wanna show you, I wanna demonstrate in today's video how what I'm looking for for confirmation of this base forming. Also, I'll reiterate what the invalidation is of this setup. And I also want to show you the key things that I'm looking at to support this move. So also a very important correlating chart is the Ethereum chart. So I'll be, we'll be having a look at the Ethereum chart to justify this move. But also a very, very key chart, the chart that really helped me anticipate that this was going to be a truncation was the Ripple chart. Ripple had hit really key support, very, very key support at $0.24, okay? And it's just sitting just above that mark right now. So that's essentially what we're gonna be summarizing in today's video. We're gonna be looking at this play out. Um, so yeah, if it sounds interested, then stay tuned. guys welcome back so first things first just want to say massive thank you to you all for helping me grow with my social media presence in particular on youtube i've not been as active on twitter of recent but uh yeah the youtube is where i'm really putting more of my attention to be honest i find that i can relay information to you a lot better on youtube rather than twitter twitter you can put these little bits of text out but really this is technical analysis Technical analysis requires pictures and videos are even better than pictures. So YouTube for me is the platform of choice for, to get my information across to you. Um, so yeah, big thank you to you all. The channel's growing very nicely. And yeah, I just wanna announce that very quickly, I just wanna mention, I'll be putting out a new offer. It's on my cryptology course. So information on that, you can check out wave618.com. You will have seen it probably in the intro to this video, but also I'll put it down in the description. You'll find links to the website. Um, yeah, people have been really happy with the fact that I do this every so often, a 50% discount on the first month. So I'm going to put that offer out the, and the, the link to that will be in the description of this video. I'll also post it on Twitter as well. And that will be available for three days. I think that gives everyone enough time to check that out. All right, so that's really good. That offer's gone down very well in the past. So I thought I'd you know, allow people that opportunity again. Reason being is it basically gives you a taste of the, the platform that I use, the Discord community that you've become a member of, and the, the updates that I do on a weekly basis covering all the uh, top 15 crypto markets. Okay, that said, let's now focus on Bitcoin. So basically what I've been saying in previous videos is I've got this as a major wave one and two, and this move up to here was three, and then I'm expecting I've got this as a wave four. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, I've got this as a WXY playing out. And then I'm anticipating those to take out this high here, 13,800. Following on from that, I expect us to rally pretty hard to the previous highs around 20K. Okay, now, as I said, following on from my last video, this seems to be playing out pretty nicely. We're gonna to have to zoom in to have a good look at this. But first of all, whilst we're on this uh, daily time frame, I wanna demonstrate this major pitchfork that we've got here, and it's using the First pivot at the start of the move, second pivot at the end of the first wave, third pivot at the end of the second wave. And you get this original pitchfork, which generally follows impulsive price action. And essentially, as long as price is held within this pitchfork, we can be confident that the upward trend is still, the, the bulls essentially still have control of this market. So a major point of invalidation for me would be price dropping out of this upward pitchfork. And I've mentioned previously, if that happens, it means we're correcting the whole of this move up, in which case I can, you can expect a rather sudden drop in price should we break out to the downside of this pitchfork, I most likely would probably find support within this consolidation here. This was very, very key 
in terms of where price was hovering around for a long time period. It really found value around this level. Um, so yeah, if we if this was also break down, if we do um, invalidate this move, I'd be looking for price to break uh, bounce at around this level. And if you really want a more precise level, if you take your Fib tool and retrace the whole move up, you're probably looking at around the 50% level, which takes you to around 6,500. And you can see that brings us nicely within this range. Whilst you can see the 0.618, for me, this is a bit too deep. That's around 5,500. And basically means you're overshooting this level of support. And once you overshoot that level of support, for me, that's concerning. Because as soon as you break below these levels of around 5,800, it can easily break down in, uh, very, very quickly. So for me, if this is all to get invalidated, 6,500 is probably the next level of support that I'd be looking at. Okay, but that said, this is not my preferred scenario. I'm putting this out there just now just to explain worst case scenario, what could possibly happen. Now, I wanna show you how going in on the four hourly now, I was anticipating this being a W, an X, and then I think the point that we were at in my last video is we were in the Y wave, but we'd only formed, of the Y wave, we'd formed the first two waves. So we'd, we'd completed this, I think we were up to here, and I was explaining how I expect another move down, but I didn't think these lows were gonna take, get taken out. Hence, we'd be calling it a truncation, where we've got a W, X, and Y, comes down to around here, Y failing to come down lower than these lows here at around 9,000. So, so far so good. We've had a move up to the upside here. Now, big question is, is this just another bit of a correction to the upside before we make another lower low? Okay, obviously that's a big question on everyone's mind. Um, and to be honest, you will never know. You will never know until we see what happens in the future. That, that's the, the thing about trading. You will never know for sure. But for me, the way it's looking is that I'm struggling to see how we can make another lower low and stay within this upward pitchfork. Yeah. So for me, if this does break down, then we're probably going to be breaking to the downside of this uh, upward pitchfork, suggesting that the bulls have lost control of the market. So for me, if this move doesn't hold on, if this move is not impulsive, then it's, it's deeply concerning. It means that we're going to consolidate a lot lower than uh, 9,000. And as I say, 6,500 is a potential target. That's a 0.5 retracement of the whole move up since our 3.2K lows. Okay. So I do think this could be a major swing up. Now, in terms of confirming this, I've mentioned... In previous videos, I mentioned it on my Discord several times, the key chart that I'm looking at is the Ethereum chart. Yeah, because that had been following a very, very nice downward pitchfork. So before we carry on with Bitcoin, I just want to pull up that pitchfork. So this is the Ethereum chart now. So with Ethereum, the major count that I've got. So first of all, let's go on the daily. So price had been following this downward pitchfork really, really nicely. You can see Ethereum loves to uh, abide by these lines, these pitchfork lines. This pitchfork really held price very, very nicely. Then we found our bottom here, and then the wave count up. Now, there's variable counts for this. Uh, you can call this a wave one, two, three, four, and five goes higher. Now, that would mean that our wave four is pretty deep, and to be exact, it's come down to so this is our wave three. It means our wave four, almost to the T, has hit the 0.618. Yeah, it bounced off $163. Okay. So that that's possible. Certainly possible. We could call it a one, two, a one, two, three, four, fifth wave up. Certainly couldn't invalidate that using Elliott Wave. Now, alternatively, it could be a one, two, one, two. Okay. Uh, it's, it's again possible and it can explain why we've seen a more deep retracement in this correction here, okay? Either way, for me, I've got a five wave count in this and I feel like we are correcting this move of which, as I say, we've corrected 0.618. 
So it, it is at a point where you need to start looking for possible reversals. You've hit the 0.618. Now let's, I want to look at this corrective pitchfork to the downside and on the hourly time frame we can see it the clearest. So just on our hourly time frame, just like with Bitcoin, I've got it as a WXY, so three waves down to make W, X wave goes sideways, and then I've got a first wave, a second wave, and a third wave for our Y, okay? Now, unlike with Bitcoin, it hasn't truncated, yeah? The Y wave has come down lower than W, so it's certainly not truncated, and we've seen this before where Ethereum completes a regular correction whilst Bitcoin uh, starts to truncate. And the only way you can really anticipate these truncations, which are not so obvious, um, is by looking at correlating charts which have completed their Elliott waves. That's the only way you can determine it. So as I say, I've been looking at Ripple, that's at a very key level of support. I've been looking at Ethereum, which also looks like it's ready to bounce. Um, but as I say, this pitchfork to the downside is key. And essentially what we've got is our, to mark this pitchfork, we've got our first major wave and our second major wave. And then we've got our modified shift. It's this modified shift pitchfork, which seems to be holding price really, really nicely. You can just look at how price is bouncing off these mid, uh, median lines. And what for me is pretty damn significant is the fact that this upper median line has not been breached. So since, since it was created on the 9th of July, so what's that? Uh, almost two months now, it's not been breached, which basically means we've been downtrending from there. And although price is much lower than it was up here, in terms of where we are in the downtrend, in terms of uh, where we are in terms of distance away from the median line, we are the furthest we've been from the median line since the 9th of July. Okay because we're now above the upper median line. Yeah, so for me, this is a short term show of strength. Now, it could be a bit premature to say that this is a sudden change in trend because to confirm that you want to see this upper warning line get broken to the upside. Okay, so to play it safe would be to wait for the a break of this upper warning line to the upside, after which I'd be getting a lot more confidence that this low here, this $164 low was a key swing low before we take out these highs here at $360, okay? But until we break that upper warning line, there is obviously some increased doubt about the move. However, that said, we've bounced off of the 0.618 retracement. We've found Bitcoin getting very close to that major lower warning line and as I say if it were to make another low it would be breaching that suggesting we're going to come down a lot lower in which case if it is to go up it needs to go up now suggesting that Ethereum could well be doing the same okay so very nicely actually we've we've broken out of this uh, upper median line so zooming in it did it pretty emphatically and it actually retested it really really nicely okay so obviously for confirmation, you want to see price get above this upper warning line, but an aggressive trader may well put a position on at this point. However, you, your stop has to be below $163, okay? There's no point really putting it any closer. Uh, and a more aggressive trader might put it at $174, but for me, that's a little bit risky. I think $163 is a reasonable place, keeping in mind that the probability of this move materializing will become a lot more probable once price gets above this upper warning line, okay? So that's basically what I wanna explain with Ethereum. And I explained to my Discord how it's a th this pitchfork on Ethereum is the key one I'm focusing on, where price is adhering to the pitchfork better than on any other of the top 15 market crap uh, cryptos, okay? So that's for why for me, this was a key chart. Now, let's go back to Bitcoin. So as I say, as Ethereum seems to be potentially showing a bounce, Bitcoin looks to be doing possibly the same type of scenario. And uh, just we've got a couple more pitchforks we can look at with Bitcoin. So this is our major downtrending pitchfork. Okay, so this 
using our first two major waves, we got this um, shift pitchfork of which we then bounced off the lower median line, went up to the upper median line. We've kind of overshot the median line a couple of times, but managed to hold. And I've mentioned that really what I want to see for further confirmation of this move in Bitcoin is I want to see this as price get above this upper median line. Because then we can say price has got above the this downward sloping upper median line for the first time since, when is it, 10th of July. So again, that two month period of that downtrend that we saw uh, in Ethereum also, it, that would be a key show of strength, price getting above this downward sloping upper median line. So that's another thing that I'm particularly focused on on Bitcoin. But as I say, a more aggressive trader could put a position on now, but your stop has to be below 9300. Okay. Um, uh, because that's your level of invalidation. 9300 is your invalidation here, whilst $164 is the invalidation on Ethereum. Um, so one more pitch for it just to take a look at on um, Bitcoin. So that's this one. So let's just tidy the chart. Let's take that one off. So this one is basically looking at, so this was our W, this is our X, and the Y wave has got one, two, three waves down, where this WXY is not actually, so it's, if we call this WXY, it's not actually truncated. What's truncated is this major Y wave in relation to this major W wave, okay? But actually, if you look at the Fib relationship between this move down here, and then extend that from here where the X wave came to, you can see actually we've come very nicely down to the 0.618 and we do often see that that's a very classical fib extension so where y is a 0.618 fib extension of wave w okay so that's another reason why i quite like the look of this being a level to bounce off of so we've got a, a nice w x y completion where y is a 0.618 extension of w it's not truncated as you can see it's formed a lower low compared to this low and you can see very nicely, this is a three wave count. So if you end in a three waves, you've got to think is that it's more likely to be a Y wave. Yeah, in which case, um, yeah, the preceding count should be W, X, Y. All right, now, as I say, in terms of downward pitchforks being breached to the upside, and what I'm waiting for is a breach of this downward sloping upper warning line to the upside. When you can see, we're getting pretty close to it. And actually we've broken to the uh, upside of this upper median line. So that's one show of strength already. But to really confirm that we're breaking out of this structure, this downward trending structure, it's this move up here. And for further confirmation, you want to see price get above this upward sloping lower, me uh, lower median line. So these are the key things that I'm looking at. But um, yeah, several reasons why I've been looking at this as a truncation. Initially, the main reason was uh, the Ripple chart. If we quickly have a look at Ripple. So I won't go into the details of the, the long-term count. If you want to know my long-term count on Ripple, well, here it is briefly. But if you want a, a breakdown of it, an explanation of it, please check out my last video from almost a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's my last video on, uploaded. And I go into that explaining why, again, it was looking like a W, X, Y truncation where Y comes down to the level of W at $0.24. It had done that many times before, that W, X, Y truncation, and I was anticipating the same kind of play out. So we've seen here lots of wicks to the downside. We're still holding this level just about, okay? So this is our invalidation. A move below this $0.233 would be our invalidation level. Um, but the risk reward is looking very good at this moment in time because as I say, I'm looking at this, these levels to hold and from there, I'm expecting us to break all time highs. So the risk reward is, is huge, to be honest. So we're sitting at very, it's a very interesting time right now. Very, very interesting. If it breaks down, it, it's going to break down very soon because as I say, we're, we're very close to invalidation. Okay, so we'll find out very soon if it's going to get invalidated. Um, but otherwise, it could be a very good, good opportunity in my eyes as a, a means of getting in to the long side. Um, yeah, so that was one of the main reasons I was looking at this as being a truncation. 
um, with us staying within this major upward pitchfork. So yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes everything I wanted to say really. So yeah, one other thing, brief thing, which I do mention in my previous video, the nice thing about this consolidation here is it bounces so nicely off the previous consolidation. So if we just put a horizontal line, you can see here the height of this block here is exactly the point that we came down to and tested very, very nicely on two occasions. Yeah, We've got a double bounce off that level. Okay, showing that it's a very key level. The next time we go up, we come down, we fail to come down that low. Again, another show of strength. So, and the interesting thing about this is during our previous Bitcoin rally, yeah, during 2017, what did we see? So we see these, uh, the top of the block get taken out to the upside. And then where do we retrace down to? Again, the top of the preceding block. Again, when we break out of this block here, we move up and where do we retrace to? The top of the block. So again here, uh, then again, once more, we break out, retrace to the top of the block here at this level. And there is one other example, which is at this point here. So again, once we break out of this block, break to the upside, where do we retest again that block? So it's one of the personalities of the chart. That's what you should always look for in technical analysis. Different charts will have their different personalities, their characteristics. This is the one one of the things that you'll see in Bitcoin. It kind of goes up in this stepwise manner and we're kind of seeing a similar play out. OK, so once more, this was the top of this block here and we've tested it very, very nicely. So another reason why this could be a very, very key support level 9100. And that's essentially what I was saying in my previous video. And in terms of the Elliott wave, wave play out, I'm sure a lot of people would have been quite miffed looking at the Elliott wave count on this because not many people anticipate truncations. And the only way you can anticipate a truncation is by using correlating charts which have completed regular corrections and are not truncating. They've actually completed a regular correction. And that's why I look at the top 15 market cap cryptos. If I, w if I weren't to do that, if I was only focusing on Bitcoin, I would be misinterpreting the Bitcoin chart. I'd be missing out on these truncations. So there's one here, yeah, this truncation here. This It was a three, three, five wave move. Well, it's meant to be a five wave move, but it turned out to be the last move was a three wave count. And the reason was because this went up and failed to come down lower. And the reason was it was truncated. And the way I could tell that is because Ethereum did exactly the same play out, but it didn't truncate. It did a very nice 335 running flat play out, whilst Bitcoin truncated. And the only way you could have anticipated that was by looking at the Ethereum chart. Um, so, yeah, I hope that highlights the importance of looking at correlating charts. So that's why in my group, what I do, I look at the top 50 markups as displayed down the right hand side of the chart here. Uh, those are the top 15 at present. So those are what we look at on a weekly basis. Um, and it helps clarify where price is going in the Bitcoin chart, which is the most important. It is the benchmark for crypto and blockchain in general. Um, yeah, so with that said, I think we can wrap it up. As I say, that discount, if you're interested in joining the group, um, so it's at relatively cheap prices and that discount provides even cheaper prices. Uh, you join the Discord community also, and it also includes my whole entire educational course, which comes out over uh, stepwise over three months where the modules are released gradually. Um, but that's everything I've learned in trading that is summarized right there. Uh, you can just purchase my course separately, but if you if you want lifetime access to the material, then you can buy it separately. But as I say, the course gives you that um, information alongside the crypto updates. The idea is that you can understand thoroughly what's being taught within the videos by learning the um, the, the knowledge based information about trading. So that's why I put it all together. Um, all right, guys, so I think that summarizes everything I wanted to say today. Um, so we'll find out what happens over the next coming weeks. I uh, hope you found that useful. If you enjoyed today's content, please leave a like. If you've got any queries, put them down in uh, below in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. All right, guys, going to wrap it up. Take care.